We ended the last video at uh, looking at uh, writing off our bad accounts receivable using the direct write-off method. This particular video is going to look at the allowance method. I suggest you definitely spend some time reading this. This is a difficult concept for students and so I want to kind of do a video to kind of help you with that concept. So when we use what we call the allowance method, one of the issues with the direct write-off method is that we said it uh, there could be a case that the matching principle didn't apply where the bad debt expense in the actual sales what happened didn't happen in the same period but under the allowance method what happens is that it matches uh, the expected loss and what I mean by that expected loss I mean that bad debt expense Um, in the same period as the sales. So it accomplishes that matching principle that um, the direct write-off method does not. So what we do is the only way we can um, make that happen is that we have to estimate our bad debt. And we're going to look at that. But first, I kind of want to just touch upon some basics. And so in doing so, we have our bad debt expense account that we used. And then we also have a new account called the allowance for doubtful accounts. So we have two accounts that we use in this process. Well, you know the bad debt expense account. It's a expense. Increases on the debit side, decreases on the credit side. Uh, well, the allowance for doubtful accounts, this new account, it is the opposite of that in that it is a contra asset. It's a contra asset. So it's the opposite of an asset in that it increases on the credit side, decreases on the debit side. And and so what it's there for is it reduces your allowance, I mean your accounts receivable account. And so on your balance sheet, you would have accounts receivable. And let's say you had a hundred thousand in accounts receivable. And then you would say less, and we abbreviate allowance for doubtful accounts with its initials. AFDR, and we would say less the allowance for doubtful accounts, and let's say we have that at 2000 And so our net realizable value of our account receivable, what we would show in the book, would be 98000 And so this represents what we call our net realizable value. Sorry about my writing. I'm glad I'm talking too, so you'll at least know what I'm saying. And you'll see it abbreviated in RV. And so that allowance for doubtful accounts, it's a balance sheet account. It's going to appear on the balance sheet, and it's going to offset your accounts receivable. So yeah, even though I have on my books 100000 in accounts receivable, I anticipate that I'm going to estimate that 2000 of those are going to be uncollectible, and therefore... Um, 98000 is going to be my um, net realizable value of the, uh, the net accounts receivables. And so what you would do in order to, you would do an entry to estimate those bad debt expenses. And we're going to look at those, that entry in just a minute. But we would debit bad debt expense and remember that's going to go to the income statement and then we would credit allowance for doubtful accounts um, and then when we actually write it off at that point we're not writing off anything we're just estimating but when we actually write off the account uh, the account receivable we're going to write it off against the allowance for doubtful account so we would debit allowance for doubtful accounts. Sorry about that. 
we would debit the allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm having a problem writing this word today. <laughs> allowance for doubtful accounts. And then we would credit the account receivable. And so that would be your entry to actually write it off. If you remember the direct write-off method, we wrote it off directly against the bad debt expense. We don't do that in this case because the bad debt expense um, has all been, already been recorded. And so we recorded the bad debt expense. We put that on our income statement. The allowance for doubtful account appears on my balance sheet. And so now I go about the business of, oh, I identified an account that is going to be actually uncollectible. I put in an allowance to do so, so I write it off against that allowance. And similar to what happens, sometimes when we write things off, people pay us. And so if for some reason we've written off uh, an account and we get it recovered, we would do a similar thing. We would reestablish the uh, account receivable. Take it back out of my allowance for doubtful accounts and then I would show I received cash and then write off the account receivable. Okay. The, the big part of this is actually doing the estimating of the bad debts. As I indicated, in order for us to make that matching principle happen where we actually do an entry of debiting bad debt expense, and crediting the allowance for doubtful accounts. And this is normally an adjusting entry happening at the end of the period. So at the end of the year, before we do our financial statements, we're gonna estimate our bad debt. So we're gonna debit bad debt expense, it's gonna to go to the income statement, and we're gonna credit the allowance for doubtful accounts, and it's gonna to go to the balance sheet. So this is an adjusting entry that we normally do with our other adjusting entries. And so this would be the entry. And we would do this whether we estimate our bad debt using a percentage of sales method or whether we do it based off of a percentage of receivables method. The entry doesn't change. We would always debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Now keep in mind, you only do that once. You do that as an adjusting entry at the end of the year. So next year when I begin to identify the accounts that I'm going to write off, I'm going to use this entry. I'm going to debit allowance for doubtful accounts. You're going to credit accounts receivable. That's the actual writing on. This is estimating the bad debt. So as I indicated, there's two methods. You can use a percentage of sales method, or you can use a percentage of accounts receivable method. In the percentage of sales method, in order to come up with the amount of the entry, remember, the entry is the same, but the question is, what is the amount? And so under the sales method, what you would do would take your total sales for the year, and this can be credit sales, uh, total sales, wh whatever you decide to estimate your uh, bad debt based off of. And then you multiply it times a percent that you deem to be uncollectible. And then in doing so, that equals your estimate of bad debt. So that would be your entry, whatever that may be. So let's say that we had sales of 150000 and we determined that 1% is deemed to be uncollectible, and so you would get 1500 Your entry would be for 1500 You would debit bad debt expense. That would go on the income statement. You would credit allowance for doubtful accounts, and that would go on to your balance sheet to offset your account receivables. That, so the sales method is pretty simple. Your sales times the percent on collectible. The entry you get is the amount of, I mean, the amount you get is the amount of your entry. On the flip side, uh, when you are using the percentage of receivables method, the allowance account balance is adjusted so that the balance is equal to the estimated of uncollectible when recording the entry. And so you're like, okay, that what does that mean? Okay, so there's your entry. I'm waiting to figure this out. And remember on your balance sheet, you have an account receivable, and then you have less 
your allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so let's say that your account receivable ending balance is 90000 Remember, totally different from sales. Same, same company. My sales would be 150000 but my account's receivable ending balance is 90000 Okay, and so under this receivables method, what you do, and I'm going to get back to that, you take your accounts receivable, year end balance, that's an L, I'm sorry, and you multiply it by a percentage you deem to be uncollectible. And what that does is that represents not the amount of the entry like we did up here, but it represents what you want your ending balance to be in your allowance for doubtful accounts. And remember, the allowance for doubtful accounts has a normal credit balance. So if this is 90000 as I indicated, and we deem that 5% of these accounts receivables are going to be uncollectible, then you get 4500 And what that represents, I want my allowance for doubtful account, account to have $4,500 in it. So if your allowance for doubtful accounts prior to this entry already has a $1,000 credit balance in it, well, I can't do an entry for 4500 because then it's going to make the balance 5500 If I already have a $1,000 credit in my allowance for doubtful account, I only need to do an entry for 3500 When I do that entry, that brings my balance up to 4500 which is what I want it to be. So remember on this one, when you get through with the calculation, that is not your entry. Your entry is contingent on what your balance already is in the allowance for doubtful accounts. This calculation tells me what I want my ending balance to be. So if I already have a thousand dollar credit balance in there, then I would only need to do an entry for thirty five hundred. And quickly, sometimes this allowance for doubtful account, even though it has a normal credit balance, it could end up with the debit balance in it. So let's say before this entry, I have a $500 debit balance in the account. Remember the account needs to have a normal credit balance. So if I do this entry and I determine I want my ending balance to be $4,500, where I'm going to need to do an entry of $5,000 because if I do a credit to allowance for doubtful accounts for $5,000, and I already had a debit balance of 500, that's going to bring my balance to my 4,500, which is what I want. So in that instance, you would need to debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts for 5,000. Hopefully this helps. I know this is a long video. This is a difficult topic. So take some time doing the uh, quick studies. Take some time looking at the video, not just look at my video, also look at those videos and connect if you're still struggling. And you can always, of course, contact me if you're struggling.